and welcome back to another episode of Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood like self-identity, relationships, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. If you are watching the video podcast right now, you would notice that I am in a different background today. So I usually like to record from the comfort of my living room and my bedroom because that is my comfort zone. But one of the intention that I have when I started this podcast is to record in public places like going to cafes or parks. And today I have decided to record in a place where I now kind of consider my second home as well, which is the climbing gym because my fiance Kevin and I are addicted to bouldering. So I thought it would be kind of like a nice space for me to take you to together <laughs> in, in this space. I'm actually facing a highway right now, so you might hear some noise in the background, but this is quite a nice space and I really hope that this recording goes well. But anyways, today the topic that I want to talk about is something that I have been having a lot of conversations about, and that is about chasing dreams and pursuing your passion. And I guess like one of the common topic that comes up every time we talk about pursuing dreams or you know passion that I personally has always have a concern about and also this is something that I know a lot of people are always thinking about is whether or not can you make money chasing your dreams so that's what I want to talk about and I kind of want to start by going through my background or some would say like my past failure because I think that would give you a better context on where I'm coming from and then I'm gonna kind of break down to you like what I've learned in the journey and basically like the verdict at the end like whether or not can you actually make money chasing your dreams so let's get started I want to start off by sharing with you my background And right now, as I am recording this episode, I am 31 years old right now. And I would say that my journey in chasing my passion started really young and it was pretty unintentional. So I got into blogging at the age of 14 and that is about 17 years ago now. And it started off truly as a passion. I did it because I enjoyed you know, crafting a blog post and putting it up online. And this passion went on with me for the next 10 years. Like I was blogging from the age of 14 to about 24 when I decided that blogging was no longer the big thing and I was challenging myself to go into YouTube. But I wanted to share that that was how I started my journey. And I think like, even though it started off as a passion back in high school, right? I think by the time that I went into university, I realized that there is some monetization potential over there. And I started to take blogging more seriously. Like I got my own domain instead of putting it on a blog spot or WordPress. And then um, I also started to, you know, sign up for affiliate marketing stuff and also trying to get involved with influencer marketing agency, stuff like that. Like I kind of dabbled into monetizing my blog, but I felt like I never really go all in in it because when I was in university, I guess that was also when I was still trying to figure out what's my next step in terms of career. And back then, I guess I just did not have the confidence that, okay, I'm going to make this work and this is going to be the thing. Like I kind of just went on with the blueprint where I should get a job after I graduated and that's what I did. But even as I got a job after I graduated, I think I've just always been someone who didn't want to just stick to one thing that I'm doing. Just like when I was a student, I never really wanted to just be a student. Like I tried to be as involved as possible outside of school, like an extra co-curricular. I would join things like joining the a cappella club or performing in a local musical or stuff like that. Then even when I started a full-time job, I was still constantly trying to find something to do outside of my job. And... 
I have always felt like I want to explore a lot of different things. So some of the things that I've done outside of my day job, um, one of it would be YouTube. So I got into YouTube because I felt like I really wanted to figure out this YouTube thing. I've always been pretty good in expressing myself in front of the camera and I love sharing about my life and I really wanted to just learn about editing, uh, like editing videos and just being comfortable to talk in front of the camera. So that's how I got into YouTube like back in 2017. Yeah, I think I got into YouTube in 2017 and then after YouTube... Um, or say like in the midst of YouTube, I was also trying to start a drop shipping business. So like I found an online course that teaches you how to drop ship business where you build a shop on Shopify and then you can link products from AliExpress or Alibaba. I forgot which vendor or marketplace it is, but basically there was this way where you can actually sell products to people from around the world by not having the products itself, basically you just link items from suppliers from China. So I kind of attended a course and tried to build this business. And after a few months, I think it was between three to six months, I realized that what I was doing wasn't going to work. And that was because the dropshipping business that I had, the focus is on selling socks. Okay, so you know that a pair of socks would probably cost you like $15. And even if the cost of the product itself is say like $3 um, to ship it to the US or where, wheresoever, I had to run Facebook ads to get clients or customers. And I realized that my product, like the profit margin is just not worth it to be running ads and getting clients like that. And I basically also realized that I'm, I wasn't truly passionate, passionate about socks. And I closed the business down after a few months, but I've learned something valuable over there. And also through this dropshipping business, because I've built my shop on Shopify, uh, a friend of mine who actually has an e-commerce course uh, like business, he then decided to employ me to actually work as a freelance web builder for those people who want to start their Shopify e-commerce store but don't want to build their store. So basically, I was like a retainer freelancer for this e-commerce education company for a bit. And I basically made a lot more money that covered for the cost that I lost when I started the dropshipping business. So that kind of built on from there. And eventually, I also kind of got into freelance social media management because I've always been managing my social media stuff myself and I was doing it in my day job as well. And eventually, in the last three years, I got into the coaching and training industry. I started off doing personal branding coaching first and I eventually um, narrowed down into social media coaching and narrowed further into video content coaching. And during this period of time, besides one-on-one -on -one clients, I was also p conducting some public trainings as well. I actually want to organize an all-female digital summit, which was kind of like an experience of its own. I'm not going to go into details, but I'm just kind of like bringing it up because I think it shares a little bit of context on all the things that I've done before. And in some ways... One might consider that I have failed in pursuing all of these things and that I didn't make it. And I used to be in that mindset as well. Like I used to be ashamed that I've tried so many things and I just kept failing and failing. But as time goes, as I reflected and as I learn more about life and I understand more about life, I've now learned to kind of rewire my mindset and that is to no longer regard all of these experiences as failures but more as the stepping stones to where I am meant to be. So as I look back into all of these experiences, right, the biggest problem that I now can see is that back then as I was going through all of these different experiences and starting all these different businesses, my problem was I did not have enough conviction. 
So every time I was getting into a business, I would always say things like, yeah, I'm trying to see if this is going to work. Like I've never really had the thought that like, okay, this is what I want to do and I'm going to really make it happen. Like I think I just always had this thought that like I'm afraid of disappointment or I'm afraid of failure. So I would always approach it as if like, okay, I'm going to try it. But if it, but if it doesn't work out, it is okay. So that was kind of like the mindset that I had going into this business. And on hindsight, now that I look back into it, I'm like, okay, no wonder, like none of them actually really like happened or succeeded, right? So the first question that you want to ask yourself is how much do you want it? Like right now, actually in front of my computer at home, there is a sticky note that I put there that asks myself, do you really, really want it? And it's okay if you don't. Because there are also many people who have argued that a passion should remain a passion. Like you shouldn't make it into a money-making thing because you are going to lose your passion in doing that. And it's completely fine if you think that way. Or alternatively, you can also just find a day job where you can enjoy doing what you're passionate about. So for example, if you love designing, you can just work for some really fun and creative agency and do that. And you can make money doing what you are passionate about. But in this episode, like what exactly that I want to talk about is for those of you who are, who feel like you will be more fulfilled in doing what you love full time as your own boss. And if the answer is yes, that is you. Like if you really, really want to make money in doing what you're passionate about, in chasing your dream, then the thing is you will really have to learn to approach it from a business or profitable standpoint instead. Like you really need to understand how to run a business in order for you to make money chasing your dreams. So you need to really learn all those things that you might not know. Like how do you actually manage a cash flow for the business? Or how do you actually like, you know, balance between the revenue and the cost of your services? And the cost is not just like the hard cost of the product because like service-based business, it's a lot about the time and the value that you can give to your client. So you got to know like how can you scale your business without having to work extra hours or things like customer lifetime value, like how much do you need to acquire a customer and how can you actually retain them so that you can maximize your customer lifetime value. And in managing a business, you would also need to learn to deal with taxes and people and all the complicated stuff that comes with running a business. So you need to know that if you really want to make it work and if you don't have any business acumen, like if you have no background in running a business at all, you will have to put in the hard work to learn all about it. And you don't necessarily need to go for an MBA or have a business degree in order to do this. Like you can kind of learn as you go, but you do have to need to clock in the hours to maybe search up videos online on how to manage your finances. Or perhaps you do need to hire a consultant or an accountant or even business coaches to help guide you in this journey. But yes, your passion itself is not going to help you make money. Sure, you can give a lot of value. You can be very talented. But if you do not have any understanding of how business works, it's going to be very hard for you. And speaking of this, right, I'm also going to be really realistic with you. Like you need to be able to see things on a business lens to understand like market sentiment and the natural progression of like business nature to really decide for yourself if your passion is truly something that is worth pursuing. So I'm going to give you an example, right? If you love baking, there are so many cafes or bakers out there in every single city in the world. So how can you actually compete with them and actually make money? And if your goal is to grow as a successful business owner, 
it's like like you need to figure a way to be creative with your offering. Like instead of just thinking of you can bake and sell to a normal customer, maybe you can get creative by focus on supplying to um, businesses that may need a big amount of pastries because then you can lock down like big orders, which makes the business more sustainable or more scalable. Or perhaps instead of just baking and selling to customer, maybe you can conduct baking classes, which may then... Um, how do I say this? Like make it more profitable because then you can scale easier in terms of these classes. Like there are many things that you have to be realistic to yourself about. Like as much as you love this thing and you are good in it, if you don't have any business acumen or if you don't get creative with your strategies, you are not going to make it. Like I'm not trying to talk you down out of it, but I'm just being realistic about it. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is also that if you really want to make money chasing your dream, you have to be very willing to sacrifice what you have now. So number one, it will be your time. Because if you are trying to build a business out of your passion, and chances are you probably still have a day job now because you need to sustain your day-to-day life, That means you need to be willing to sacrifice the time after your office hours, the time that you usually would spend to watch shows on Netflix or just chill or hang out with friends. You will need to be willing to sacrifice this time to work on your craft, to build that website, to secure your clients, to do whatever it takes to build that business of your dreams. And... Same thing goes with your relationships. And this is something that I kind of figured along the way. I'm pretty sure that you have already heard of the saying that you are the average of the five people that you spend time with. So I'm going to be really harsh and realistic to you again and tell you that perhaps if the friends that you are spending time with right now if they are the people that are always just complaining about life and are just not as ambitious and they are taking you down, you probably need to break up your relationships with them. Because in order for you to rise up to the level that you want to be, you need to hang out with like-minded people who can help you to rise up to that place. So you might need to actually sacrifice the relationships that you have right now. Is that something that you are willing to sacrifice? So this could be when reality hits for you as well. Like, can you even afford to be chasing your dreams right now? Because as we get older, we do get a lot more responsibilities and commitments. So some of you, if you are in your late 20s and early 30s, you might have already bought a property or a house Or maybe you have a loan for a car as well. And I do know of some of my friends who are in a situation where their elderly parents would need them to take care of them. And they might even have hospital bills to take care for their parents. Or in that unfortunate situation where if you are still in credit card debt, for example... So there are many situations in which you might feel that you cannot afford to chase your dreams right now. And I can totally feel it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and tell you that, no, you can chase your dream and achieve it, whatever you want. Like, I do think you can. But I also believe that there is a season for different things. Like perhaps if right now you really have to focus on clearing your credit card debt, I would say that perhaps the wiser thing is to stay in your day job and to get promoted and clear off your debt first. Or perhaps if right now you really have to take care of your elderly parents, then do that because you don't get a lot of time in your life to be doing that. Just don't feel so discouraged if that is your current situation and still keep the passion ignited. And by that, what I mean is, even though you may be in a situation where you felt like you are unable to do what you want to do, 
you can actually switch the perspective or switch your day-to-day lifestyle habits to kind of match your current reality. So even if, say, you cannot chase your passion of building a web designing business, for example, okay? That's a pretty specific example. But yeah, so if that is your current situation, perhaps what you can still do right now is to still be in touch with all the content out there that might continue to educate you about this specific industry that you are interested in. So still look out for Pinterest boards or TikTok videos or YouTube videos or even sign up for online courses where you can continue to learn more about the topic or whatever it is that you want to do in the meantime to prepare yourself for the time when you are finally free to chase your dreams by that you would feel more prepared for you to really kickstart everything. So that's pretty much what I want to cover today. I guess you can see that my verdict is that the answer is yes, you can make money chasing your dreams. But number one, you also have to have the conviction. Like if you really want to be successful and make money in chasing your dream, you really have to have that mindset that you really, really want it and you are going to do whatever it takes to get there. Because if you don't, you are probably just going to be half-hearted and when you fail, like if you have any small failures in the journey, you'll probably just give up instead of like figuring out a way to pivot and continue to grow based on where you're at at that moment. And secondly, yes, you can make money chasing your dreams, but you also have to be smart about it. Like you do have to learn all about business. You do have to go out and network with people. You have to keep on growing in order to make money. And thirdly, you have to be very willing to keep on going and going and persevere because that's pretty much how you'll be able to make it. Like you're not going to be able to avoid failures at all. Probably the only thing that you want to do is even if you fail to be able to rise up from it as soon as you can and to keep on going. And also, you have to be willing to sacrifice the things that you want now, which is why you got to ask yourself, do you really, really, really want it? And the last tip that I have or like the last advice that I have for those who probably are in a season where they are not able to chase their dreams right now is that you probably need to learn to deal with your existing reality while you are building your dream reality. So that's all that I have for you right now. I am really ready to go for a climb in the background. You know, if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a five-star rating on Spotify or give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Or better yet, if you are listening on Apple Podcasts, please drop me a review as well. It will definitely help me a lot to grow as a podcaster and a content creator. And I cannot wait to see you in my next episode. Goodbye!